Name two conditions that determine whether a collision between two molecules will lead to a chemical reaction. So for us to have a successful collision that leads to a chemical reaction, two conditions need to be satisfied. The molecules need to have sufficient energy, a kinetic energy that is equal to or greater than the activation energy. And then another condition, the molecules must be correctly oriented. In terms of the collision theory, explain why the rate of a chemical reaction increases with increasing temperature. This is a follow-up to 5.1.1. In 5.1.1, we see that sufficient kinetic energy, EK, that is greater or equal to the activation energy. So what happens when we increase temperature in a chemical reaction? The average kinetic energy of the molecules is going to increase. More molecules will have a kinetic energy that is equal to or greater than the activation energy. And as a consequence, we're going to have more effective collisions per unit time. That is 5.1.2. Let's look at 5.2. Curve R represents the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution curve for a gas in a closed container at a certain temperature. Curve Q and S represents the curves of the same molecules at different conditions. 5.2.1, write down the name of the energy represented by P. If you look at P, uh, you should know that that is where we find our activation energy. So P is the activation energy. And 5.2.2, write down the change in the conditions which results in curve Q. Let's go ahead and look at curve Q. Curve Q is the same shape as curve R, but it is just slightly above. That is what we expect to see when the concentration has been increased. So we can say that curve Q is a consequence of increase in concentration. If you increase concentration, you expect to see something like curve Q. And then now, curve S. What is the difference between curve S and curve R? Well, the peak went down and it shifted to the right. That is what we expect to see when there is an increase in temperature. So in B, there's clearly an increase in temperature. If you look at curve R and curve S, you'll realize that for curve S, we have more molecules that have a kinetic energy that is equal to or greater than the activation energy. That is because there's been an increase in temperature in curve S. 5.2.2, let's do 5.3. So in 5.3, a teacher uses the reaction between magnesium ribbon and nitric acid to investigate one of the factors that influence reaction rate. The balance equation of the reaction between magnesium and nitric acid is given below. 5.3.1, write down an investigative question for this investigation. Well, there's no way for you to answer this question. We do not have enough information. We actually discussed this at the memo discussion. The question statement up to this point, it doesn't say anything about which factor we are investigating, which factor we are plotting against the reaction rate. So how can you possibly answer 5.3.1 without that information? So I actually kept the question, but what happened is that any factor you mention, you get all the marks. So if you say, what is the relationship between state of division and rate of reaction? You're going to get a mark. What is the relationship between temperature and rate of reaction? Whatever acceptable factor that we have versus reaction rate, you're going to get all your full marks. Uh, let's take a look at 5.3.2. So in 5.3.2, the results obtained when using diluted nitric acid are shown on the graph below. We are given the mass of magnesium versus time. And then 5.3.2, which compound magnesium or nitric acid is in excess? 
give a reason for your answer using the information on the graph. If you close one eye, why am I saying if you close one eye? I'm going to tell you soon. You can see that nitric acid is our reactant in excess because magnesium is used up, right? But then if you take a closer look, you're going to realize that uh, the mass of magnesium, it actually doesn't get finished because it doesn't touch the x-axis here. So why are we saying magnesium is used up when it doesn't touch the x-axis? That is something, that is another thing that we talked about. A lot of things are wrong in this question. Alright, uh, so what we concluded, if you say magnesium is in excess, you get all the marks. If you say nitric acid is in excess, you get all the marks. It's either that or the question gets removed. There is no scenario where you're going to get free marks. There's a lot of people that think that uh, if a question is wrong, then all lenders get free marks. But no, it doesn't work like that, unfortunately. Right, that is 5.3.2. Uh, we are saying that nitric acid is in excess in our case. So we're going to run with that. Let's go ahead and take a look at 5.3.3. Calculate the average reaction rate in grams per second during the first 30 seconds. So the mistake that a lot of people do, they want to calculate the rate of reaction in mole per decimeter cube per second all the time. But this question is very specific. We want the rate of reaction in grams per second. So what are we going to say? We're going to say that our rate of reaction is equal to, we can use the information in the table. We start with one gram and in 30 seconds we have 0 0.8 grams. So we can use that information to calculate our rate of reaction. We're going to say minus the change in mass divided by the change in time. Why am I saying minus? Obviously, I can see that my final mass is 0 0.8 and my initial mass is 1. 0 0.8 minus 1 is negative. So I'm putting a minus sign so that I can compensate for that. But I still think you would get your marks if you don't put that minus sign, if you don't realize that you need to do that. Anyway, let's substitute. Minus mass final, that is 0 0.8. Mass initial is 1 divided by time final. Time final is 30 seconds and time initial is zero. This is equals to 0 0.0067 grams per second. 